Hello, I'm Stuart Watkiss. I'd like to introduce you to my new book, Beginning Game Programming with Pi Game Zero. This is my second book, um, also published by A Press. Was my first was Learn Electronics with Raspberry Pi. This is another Raspberry Pi book, although you could use another computer instead. But this one is purely based on software. It's about how you can program computer games using Pi Game Zero, which is a easy to use, friendly, programming environment for creating games. So give you a quick run through about the book. So it's designed for um, beginners to, to both Python and Pi Game Zero. Um, although if you've got a bit of Python experience already, that would be useful. The first chapter is on creating computer games. It introduces you to what we're gonna do in the book, um, how to create your environment on your Raspberry Pi, what editors we'll be using, which is new, which is a easy to use uh, editor designed for getting started in Python programming. Chapter two is on getting started with Python. It's a very quick introduction to Python. So obviously a, a full book on Python, uh, Python merits a full book on its own. But in this case, I've just gone through a very, very quick um, overview. So if you've never programmed in Python before, but you've programmed in another programming language, then that might be enough. Or perhaps you've um, done a bit of Python programming and just want a bit of refresher. In that case, the chapters should be just about right. If you've never programmed before, then you might need to uh, refer to other books as well, or there's some more resources on the web. Um, but hopefully that should be enough. In chapter three, we move on to Pi Game Zero. Pi Game Zero is, as I say, uh, an easy environment for programming computer games in. It takes the functionality of Pi Game, but makes it much easier to use. So you can be up and running with just a few lines of code. In this chapter, we start with a, a basic sprite, an actor, and shows you how you can animate the actor so that it appears to walk as he's moving around the screen. In chapter four, we look at game design. What makes a game fun, interesting, things like that. In this case, we look at the, the same basic game that we created in chapter three, which is a compass game. And we look at how we can adjust the timing to make it more realistic and how we can add obstacles to make it more challenging. Um, things like that, that you can incorporate into your games in future. Chapter five, we look at graphic design. Now, this book isn't going to teach you how to be a graphical designer. But what it's going to give you is some of the tools that you can use to create the graphics to use in your game. After all, that's what this is about, making graphical computer games. Chapter six, we look at colours, how the computer represents colours and how you can use them in Pi Game Zero. Also, we introduce a, a few, like, do this through useful bits of code. Have a bouncing ball that changes colour as it bounces and a colour selector. In Chapter 7, we create another new game, Tank Game Zero, it's called. It's basically a tank-based uh, game where you fire shells at an opponent's tank. The unique thing about this is it's all created using vector graphics. So you create the tank out of basic shapes, add them up, and it makes, makes a, a complete tank. Also look at how you can introduce um, a bit of gravity into the trajectory so that you can make it as the, the fire, the, the tank fires a shell, it, it takes a sort of realistic looking shape. Um, basically, we're looking at, at how we can make it so it's, it, it's as you'd expect in a game. Chapter 8, we look at sound, making sounds, recording sounds, and how you incorporate sounds into your Pi Game Zero program. In this, we add a little game, which is a keyboard game designed for a touchscreen. This uses the Raspberry Pi touchscreen. If you don't have a touchscreen, you can still play it with a mouse. It does only take one key press at a time, which is a limitation of Pi Game Zero. But 
it makes a little piano that you can play music along with. Chapter nine, look at object-oriented programming. So object-oriented programming makes it easier to create more complex games. As you, if, you, if you stick with the procedural style programming, which is what we use on the earlier games, then you'll find that the code grows longer and longer and it's harder to understand how it works. By using object-oriented, you break it up into different modules, different objects, and then you act on those mod objects. In this, we create a game. You've probably played it as a card game. It's a matching pairs memory game uh, where you normally you'd deal the cards face down on the table and turn them over looking for the matching pairs. In chapter 10, look at artificial intelligence. Not talking about machine learning or anything like that. We're looking at how you can make a computer program have the computer as a competitor and have that at a realistic level of difficulty for the player to make it enjoyable. Look at the memory game, which previously was based on a timer and add a, a, comp, a computer opponent uh, with a bit of intelligence. So look at a few different ways that you can add that intelligence. Um, and depending upon how you do that, depends upon how easy it is to play against it. Also look at battleships. You've probably played this again as a, perhaps a, a plastic battleship game where you put the, the pegs in as you uh, fire shots against your opponent. In this case, we're really creating the game to teach you about, um, about how you can incorporate the artificial intelligence into the game of battleships as well. I'm just looking at a normal level, about the, the level that most people would, would want to compete against. And then in chapter 11, we look at improvements and debugging. So looking at other things that you can do in Pi Game Zero, other tools, things like putting titles on, changing your icon, how to create a scrolling screen, and debugging, looking at, at what you do when there's a problem in the code how you can fix those problems. And it finishes with one last game, which is a space shooter game. This is a, a pixel image based graphical game where you fly a spaceship and have to fire to destroy asteroids that are coming towards you. And it uses a lot of the techniques that have been introduced earlier on in the book. So when you reach the end of the book, hopefully if you've, uh, if you've worked through the exercises, it's given you a bit of an idea of how you can create your own computer games or you can modify some of the existing games. And then that's really when you start to learn is when you start to develop your own games and hopefully you'll have learned the techniques you need through the book. So it's out now, um, available as a uh, download. Uh, you get it from A Press, then it's a, a DRM3 DRM free um, download so it's not locked into a particular reader or you can buy it through through your normal bookstores online or otherwise and uh, published by A-Press beginning games programming with Pi Game Zero by me Stuart Watkiss so if you um, I'm going to create some more videos like this um, introducing you to some of the individual games so if you'd like to watch these, then please subscribe to my channel, click the, the bell icon, and you get notified when a new video comes out. In the meantime, have a look at the book, and if you like it, please do um, leave a review on Amazon or leave a comment below on this video. Thanks for watching.